A couple things I want to show you guys is some books um, that that uh, I often want to show show people this stuff, uh, and then maybe I'll lend you some if you're interested. Um, you're interested in the sauna. This is the book, uh, The yeah. Sauna by Rob Roy. And we essentially use this exact design for the sauna, except that he uses concrete. It's called cordwood, and he uses concrete because we use cob. We use dirt. Um, but that might be interesting browse. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to build another sauna anytime soon, but uh, that's okay. Um, architecture, I think here we can make almost everything. An example of a lot of traditional wow. things. Uh, there's a book called Built by Hand, Vernacular Buildings Around the World. And it's very inspiring. You look through it and just all different cultures and how they use materials. And wow. you start to realize how many buildings out there are made of natural materials. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got dirt and wood and rocks and we can build stuff. This one's very similar. This is the sequel to the book uh, Shelter, which was a 60s kind of book, I think, 60s, 70s. This one, just like the other one, has inspiring examples. So this one's in Mexico here. Oh, wow. Done with Some ferro cement. Gorgeous, yeah, right? lightweight concrete. Wow. Wire mesh and concrete. Um, this is a good book to browse. Hand sculpted house. You can tell it's kind of, I mean, I should buy another one. This has had a hard <laughs> life. It's been well used. Yeah, but at least it hasn't been lonely. Yeah. So this talks about what we really care about is building with dirt. Um, dirt's non-toxic. It's free. The dirt here is very good for building. And, uh, and so this is how to build a cob cottage, a cob house. Um, you have some experience with such things? Architecture somewhat, yeah. yeah. Traditional kind of methods, I guess they're yeah. considered traditional, American <laughs> traditional. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't totally know what we're doing here. We, we're very open to experimenting. And I want to build more huts like, uh, like the cob huts and have, I want a dozen more of them. I want to put some in a circle with a little fire in the middle and okay. you know, we can start to play and I want to make them prettier. So we have magic spots for people to stay. Oh, great. Hobbit house, you know. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, let's see. A couple other books that might be of interest. So another book on building is Earth Bag Building. Uh, this is putting dirt in, in bags. We could use costals, or we can also find the source material that they use to make costals. Costals are kind of like a gunny sack. Mm -hmm. Dog food comes in them. And they just circle these around and make beautiful shapes. We don't know how to do this yet, but it is done in Mexico. And um, so this is high on the list of priorities. Yeah, that sounds like a cool idea to try. Yeah, I'm ready to try that now. Okay. Yeah. And the advantage of this is that with this, you don't mix water into the dirt. Because I sometimes wonder, as we're making cob, why are we mixing water into the dirt and then we have to dry the building out? Mm -hmm. And also in this climate, sometimes my walls start to mold before it dries out. And so this seems pretty smart. Mm -hmm. It's a book on water storage. Uh, we're off the water grid here. And so... This one talks about different ways to store water. There is no perfect way, but it compares them all. Well, the perfect ways are too expensive, which I guess makes them imperfect, like stainless steel and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the goal is to capture all of the water that we would need for the entire year during the rainy season. So we've got a four month rainy season, that's, yeah. that's tough. And this is of course why uh, we'll do things like use the sauna to keep clean, because uh, we really want to conserve every single drop. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that sounds a little extreme, but I mean, if we can use less in washing dishes, we should do it. I mean, anything we can save on. So. Mm -hmm. um, there's a book called Gaia's Garden, which I need to go find. I must have, I put it somewhere. That's the best overview on permaculture that I have. And so I would recommend that. Um, it's, it's accessible, and, and it's about doing permaculture on a small scale. This is kind of the Bible of uh, permaculture, permaculture designer's manual. This one will hurt your head. Um, it's, it's fairly dense. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, there's a lot in there. Yeah, and um, this is the kind of stuff we're, we're generally dealing with here. I don't agree with all of it, but a lot of it, you know, depends on your situation and your goals. Um, permaculture is not a prescribed way to do things. It's a, it's a way to design and think about things. So it doesn't always say what you should do exactly, but certainly a lot of solutions in here are absolutely awesome. Um, a more specific couple of books are these two, Edible Forest Gardens. Now, this is very much like that, except this is really specific to what we're doing here. Ecological Design and Practice for Temperate Climate Permaculture. Once again, very dense, and it will hurt your head. But this is the closest thing uh, I have to the Bible for what I want to do here. Um, in fact, I am a little more extreme than this um, in terms of wanting to 
really develop an old growth forest that we can also scrape some value off of to survive. So uh, I don't recommend these unless you have a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple other interesting things, and this gets more relevant to some of the activities I want to do with you guys around here. This is a book, uh, Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It, The Complete Back to Basics Guide. And it's just an overview of a lot of different systems that farms have. And um, it's got sections on crafts and making beer and vegetables and canning and making bread. And so it's not an in-depth resource, but it's a great overview. It gives you ideas. I mean, here's building gates. Yeah. We're not good at building gates. You know, everybody buys gates now. And so, you know, how to butcher pigs. How to butcher pig, wow. Yep, when we're about to kill a rabbit. So you're going to start to see some of this stuff in action. Um, so this is a good good overview, really okay. exciting, and you say you're pretty handy, so yeah. we might be picking some cool projects all and right. say, all right, you know, do we want to try and learn to make butter? Well, we're going to have to make a butter turner, um, and I don't know which challenges we'll pick. We'll, we'll talk about your interests and skills, and and uh, there's so many ideas, there's thousands of things we could do, so we'll try and pick the right ones. A couple other books I'll point out real quick, um, Designing and Maintaining Your Edible Landscape Naturally. This talks about if you're going to have plants in your life anyway, we might as well have plants we can eat. And so um, this is a great resource um, as well for picking plants and raising them in a good way. Uh, importantly, along with that, is uh, seeds. Today, for example, in our apples, we save the seeds. Uh, and we want to get good at saving all, all kinds of seeds because each one could be a plant for us. Um, a great example of that is tomato seeds. Tomatoes grow in a lot of climates, and of course, not everybody buys them. It's very easy to save the seeds and just start planting tomatoes all around any space you have. And if you have thousands of seeds, it doesn't even matter if you're doing it in the right way. It doesn't matter if most of them fail. And what will happen is you'll discover that uh, some of those seeds grow in places you wouldn't expect. Um, people around here say you can't grow tomatoes without a greenhouse. Hmm. I don't agree. I had a, some broken tiles, a pile of them on the side of the uh, lodge here, and a tomato just came out of it hmm. because the seed got there and, and it liked it. I think it liked the heat, heating up the tiles. Oh. And so if, if instead of forcing the plants to grow the way we imagine they should, hydroponics for example, uh, needing roofs and tubes and potentially chemicals, if instead we can, we can have such a surplus of seeds that we can just try things out then you could discover that you're getting tomatoes with almost no work. Mm -hmm. So um, odd thing about tomatoes is you actually have to let the seeds rot a little bit. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. you, you, no, you, I haven't heard that. Really? It was really weird when I first was planting tomatoes. Just I was like, tomatoes? Just, well, tomatoes and a few other plants. A few other. What happens is there's a little uh, kind of stuff around the seed, mm -hmm. and that has to ferment off. And so you actually set it in, an, in a glass, and you let it kind of rot for a few days. Then if you want, you can either dry the seed or you can plant it. So um, so today, I think we had a tomato and I didn't save the seeds. That's Ooh, a that's failure, true. horrible tragedy. <laughs> oh, no. Um, no huge deal. <laughs> if we get anything close to, to in a successful pattern, then we'll have surpluses. And, uh, uh, a couple other books. Uh, here's a book on Echo Village Living. Um, the Bosque is not really an Echo Village yet. It is a potential Echo Village. Uh, there's not a lot of people. Uh, as I open it up again, there will be people again, and it'll be kind of a temporary village. And that becomes sort of a cultural petri dish. You're going to end up with your own experience here, and you're co-creating it um, on the framework that, that I've defined as far as some of the cultures and on the physical space. But then you'll bring in your own ways of doing things and find really hopefully fulfilling ways of living. This book is Echo Village Living, Restoring the Earth and Her People. A lot of nice essays about different ones. It's a very famous one here. Um, I kind of like the, uh, in the in the middle here, in the, in the beginning, there's a circle of some issues that you might think about in, in, when you're creating a community, when you're creating really a new human society. Um, and a social, economic, cultural, spiritual, ecological. And so this kind of gives you things you can think about. And so we can wonder that even in our own interactions, even if we have, you know, just five or six people here, we can wonder, well, how are we doing resolution conflict? Are we gossiping? Are we, uh, how does each resource we have get used? How are we entertaining ourselves? And what's the impact of that? And I don't have the answers for that stuff, and I think these people don't either, but, but they're trying. Mm -hmm. so. 
not a bad book. And then this one's kind of outdated because it's all online now. This is a directory of communities um, around the world. And I've gone through and marked things I liked about different communities that I thought uh, resonated with me or whatever. And um, yeah, now all this is online. So there's ic.org and icdb.org. And uh, you can look up communities near you and see the different ways they do things. There's a huge variety. Some of them are really structured. Some of them are more, you know, do whatever the hell you want. Uh, some of them have businesses. Some of them are for retired people. So they very widely. Um, cool. Cool stuff. All right. Yeah, and I will try and...